Hey there, in today's video, I'm giving you another suggestion for, uh, I don't know, problem solving is the right word, or helping you get unstuck when you really just can't seem to get started. I think getting started is one of the hardest parts in the whole creative journey. Like, it's fine once we're going, uh, once we get started, <laughs> once we have a plan, or I, well, even if we have a plan, sometimes it's hard to get started. But the biggest hurdle is picking up that pencil, that paintbrush, the marker, whatever it is that you happen to be doing, and putting it into to motion. Because once we're activated, oh my gosh, it's it's awesome. But it is hard to, it, and it can be paralyzing to be looking at a canvas or an art journal page or a sheet of paper and think, what the heck, what am I, where am I supposed to start? So this is just a super easy, um, I don't wanna call it a formula like I've been calling these formulas, but they, it's like something you would do in grade school, right? It's just making some marks and coloring them in and or making a, a continuous line drawing. But here's the thing, sometimes it's the easiest things that can propel us forward. And often that's what we need is like someone to say, hey, have you thought of this? Hey, why don't you try that? And then be right there alongside us. I wish I was. I wish I was right there alongside you. Um, cheering each other on. We can cheer each other on, right? So you, it's as hard as it is for you to get started, trust me, it is equally as hard for me to get started. I have had different canvases, different um, projects that I just, I have no idea how to get started. So it's not just you, it's me. I'm speaking to myself as well. I'm saying to myself, when you can't do anything, do this. And whether the result is spectacular or not, isn't the point. It's the point is, is getting myself loosened up and ready to go and then move on to the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. And that's where the beauty is. It's, it's, all, it's just in the process. And I think it can be really hard not to be hung up on the end result. That will come, that will come, but we have to in the me but we have to start, we have to begin, and we have to practice, and we have to do things over and over and over again before we can get to the end result that we're like, whoa, yeah, you know, be cheering ourselves on. Anyway, it's just another pep talk, um, and maybe it's because I needed one too, so um, I hope this helps you. I hope that you're not going like, this is the, this is, <laughs> insane these easy they're so easy why didn't i you know of course you could think of them you can look them people are doing all kinds of easy things like this so just um i just want to encourage you to get started try some simple things do an easy activity and see if that doesn't help you know project push you into the next uh level of your of your art making and and help you get over the hurdle of starting so okay blah 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 um <laughs> Without further ado, let's get started. This version of um, getting you out of getting you unstuck is something you've probably actually already done, or um, how your children have done or grandchildren. It's to take an um, to take a, a drawing material and then just draw random marks on it and then color those in. So we're gonna I'm gonna remind you of this. This is super simple and. There is no reason any of us can't do this. So I typically you would use like a pencil or maybe a maybe a charcoal if you wanted to smudge, a pen, something, and you wouldn't usually start on a surface that already has something on it. But remember, we have used up our paint, we have done all kinds of different things. So possibly we have pages, you and I, that are like this. Like I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what to do. So I need to employ one of my strategies because I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling like I don't know how to begin. So I'm going to use an oil pastel and an orange, which is something you, I wouldn't normally use, but I want it to kind of stand out and I want to be able to see it against the green. And hopefully it's dark enough. I should have probably tested it, but I'm just going to randomly make some marks on here. And then I have put out some paints and in these videos that I've been doing, kind of giving some different strategies and formulas, so to speak, I've been trying to use completely different color palette every time because it's just to kind of get your juices flowing as well. So this time I'm using fluid paints. The other videos I was using uh, heavy body and I have a cobalt, turquoise, Van Dyke, brown, raw sienna, titan green pale and titanium white is the, is the one color that is in every single one of them. I want to, uh, 
usually I always want something really light. I have a couple lights and then I need a really dark color. So there's always going to be a dark and a, and a light and white just is the easiest option. I could have used maybe a very pale yellow, but I also have a pale green here. So let's get started. I'm going to be extremely bold with my oil pastel and let's just see where it takes me. I'm just, I'm going to try not to think about it. I'm going to use my arm just to move all the way around and there you go. Okay, so I'm done. Now I get to fill it in. Start, I'm going to start small. I know that, that doesn't sound very bold because I, but I'm going to use some mixing because I, you know, I, like, I, I do love to mix paint and I'm just going to start here. And as you can see, it's very, um, it's not opaque at all, so you can actually see through it. I'm gonna do two, two um, spaces with this color that I've mixed up here, just cause I think that's kind of fun. I'm gonna use this, maybe I'll do, no, I'll just do two to start. Okay, then next up I'm gonna do, use my a little, slightly bigger brush. I'm going to use this Van Dyke Brown and maybe some of this green and see what we get. Maybe I'll bring in a little yellow. Okay, it's kind of muddy, but not bad. Maybe I get a dash of that blue in there. Okay, that's better. Remember, you get to decide what you like. You don't have to let the paint rule you. Okay, so I'm gonna use this on two spots, maybe this bigger one. And it's as easy as <laughs> just painting it in. And I don't even know if I really should talk about it, but I guess I am because it's very satisfying, honestly, and I think you'd like it if you really are stuck and you just don't know what to do. I'm gonna do one more with this. I'm gonna do this spot right here. Okay, now I'm going to use my bigger brush and maybe use mostly this darker color, maybe add a little bit of the blue in or the turquoise and just see what, what, what I can get for, with that. It's always a good idea to use different brushes because you will get different effects with the brush. And it's easy just to be painting and just using the same brush because it's in your hand. And a lot of times, even in my examples when I'm painting with you guys, I, I have a tendency to do that because you kind of forget like, oh, I should switch it up. But each tool gives a different effect with the paint and it can make a really, um, it can make a difference in what you're, in what you're painting. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the small brush, and I wish I'd done another one with this color. Well, I, st I could. I'll do this one right here, and then I'll mix up another color or try to find another color. Let's see. Maybe something a little bit more with the uh, raw sienna. Let's see here. I'm gonna use all of it because I might even need more, but let's start there. Okay, let's see what it looks like. It's kind of muddy, but I like it. And it's still fairly transparent. Here's the thing. I gonna, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna attach this line right here. And because this is one big space, I, I get to decide, I get to choose. Because, you know, the art, it's, I'm going to go like that with it. Because that way I can have some different, I can have some different shapes. Um, I'm not really sure where else to put this. Maybe down here. And maybe one more. Where would it go? Where would it go? Uh, I'm thinking up here. And I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm going to do that. As if that was natural. Because I get to, I get to decide. Okay just so I have more examples. So you kind of get the gist of it. Now I have one, two, three, I have three more squares. I can decide, maybe I'll do mostly this turquoise. And then what I, what I would, would do, I do like, I do like it, um, is I might also do one more. So I'm not, I like them where they're not together are touching the same color, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you set these rules for yourself and then you're like, really, why did I, why, why am I doing that? Um, okay, let's do one. I haven't even really touched the white, have I? Let's do one with the white and what, here? A little bit of this. 
Okay. And then what you can do is, what I do anyway, is I go back and forth. I say, hmm, I don't really like this shade. So what can I do different with that? I kind of like this dark around the edge and I like the, the, um, the orange. So I can, once the paint dries, I can go back in with another layer over the top of it. I can paint over the whole thing and I have some lovely texture. I think the point is I can actually go in and I'll tell you the point and do some of the mark making. Uh, but the point is I've got, I've got myself started. I've got some paint mixed up and now I can, I can move on to the next phase, whatever that might be. I do not have to stick with these colors, but as you can see, it's better than what was there before. And I, I'm feeling energized and kind of invigorated like, oh, what should I do now? Okay, I don't like this color. You know, what, do big X, big X. Let's, let's get some new paint on that and go from there. So this would have to dry and then I put it over more paint. Although sometimes I paint wet on wet and it mixes in and that is a really cool effect. I like how some of the letter, the, the shapes are coming through with some of the transparency of the paint. So it's just, it's just a fun way to get started. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more. I have another page that I absolutely just do not know what to do with. It is a plate piece of collage paper or I think it was on something and then I collaged it in here. I'm not really sure what it is. It has a lot of marks and a lot of different things. It feels like it's fairly thick, so I don't know. I don't know what it was. And then I made some marks over the top of it and clearly I don't know where I'm going with it. So what I'm gonna do is the sim similar activity that I did before, but you do not need me to you know, talk you through it. This is extremely simple. So I'm just going to fast, I'll fast forward through it so that you can just watch the process and then I'll, you know, regroup at the end. I am going to, instead of using the, um, a, a, another uh, oil pastel, what I'm going to use this time is a paintbrush with paint. So like I said, I'm trying to do different things than using a pencil or a pen, which is what you would often use for this activity. And so I'm trying to mix it up. So I'm going to, like I said, I'll fast forward and we'll see what happens. Okay, as I was painting this, I started wanting to adjust the colors and it, I realized I gotta let it dry, although I did go over this one in the, as I was painting. Also, I was finding that certain colors I don't like, I really don't like the yellow, I don't feel like it goes with it, so I would definitely, um, I would adjust that. I would, I don't know. I'm not sure what color would look right, but I'm, as we're talking, I'm going to see what I can do. Then they all become a little too similar, but maybe that's okay. Maybe that's what I'm liking today. Maybe that's what I, I want. So, and what I also did, I don't know when I was painting in the lines, I don't know if you noticed, but I just, I was a little more intentional because I realized I, if I stopped, I was just going to have these really big spaces and I wanted some differences. I wanted to be able to paint with a variety of colors. And if I only had, you know, six spaces, um, that I wouldn't be able to do that. So I like that a little bit better, but it's not about that. It's about really just getting yourself going. And I think being able to identify, Oh, I like that color. I don't like that. I like how they all go together. I don't like that. I think that's just, this is a really easy exercise for that. It's easy to get started. It's easy then to come in and adjust your colors because you are looking at it thinking, what, what's, what's wrong with this? And yet it just needs, 
maybe a different color and somebody else might come and say, oh, I love those colors, but you get to decide. And that is the fun thing. So like, you know, now I want to come in and make some marks. I want to scratch it up. I want to make some, you know, make it look different because that's got me, got me re-engaged with making art, even though I was feeling like, oh, I don't know what to do with this page and I don't know how to even start. There's a lot of different thing, ways you can do this similar activity and it's so easy. But if you are just feeling stuck, 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 this is a great way to get started. Another uh, uh, tip and another idea and think a way that I uh, sometimes approach things when, when I can't do anything else, you can certainly do this. <laughs> Every single one of us can do this activity right here. Um, so I would not say that this is, this is uh, rocket science or anything, but it is a way that you're activating your mind, your hands, your, your creative spirit, and you are getting ready, yourself ready to then launch into something else. It's part of the process. Sometimes we just have to do simple activities and remind ourselves, yes, now I can turn the page. I'm going to use this color palette and I'm going to do something else with it. Or this is what I do today because I only had 10 minutes and perfect. There you go. So I hope this gives you another idea, another way to get started when you are feeling stuck, when you're just feeling bogged down, or when you just need something very simple to do and very, uh, you know, you are still using, you are still making choices by using your own colors that you choose by uh, making the own, your own pattern on the paper. There's so many pieces to this that are unique to you that you don't, you shouldn't overlook that because this right here, you, you could not replicate even though you're like, oh, that's as simple as can be, I could replicate that. But you really couldn't because we all have a different way that we make the mark, we're gonna have a different way that we mix the color. There's just, even if you tried to copy it exactly, it's gonna be, it's always gonna be slightly different because we are bringing our own unique hand, uh, eyes, vision, whatever it happens to be into the process of making art. So. Anyway, I am sorry to babble on about this, but I'm just really wanting to encourage you to, uh, if you're feeling stuck or, or that you can't proceed, definitely pick one of these simple activities uh, to spur you on. And anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.